If you want to grab our men's lifestyle supplement and male advantage ebook, all links are in the bio. This is to take Benicio and Irene home. That'd be okay. See how long he waited to answer? Okay, so he was holding eye contact, he's thinking about things, the slight smirk, the hold of the eye contact. It's taken him like three, four seconds to answer. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Hello guys and welcome back to another video. In this video we're going to be breaking down the aloof nature of Ryan Gosling. I personally think Ryan Gosling, he, he may have the best body language in the world. At least it's my favourite. So we're going to break down a couple of clips. I think it's important to see the other side of body language and see somebody who, let's say isn't necessarily aggressive for what would be considered a natural alpha male, but has a different take. There's more than one way to be dominant or to have positive body language. So that's what we're gonna look at in this video. Hi. Hello, hello, A-boy. So first and foremost, we can see the way he turns very slowly when they come up to him. Hello, hello, A-boy. It's not like he's jumping around or he's panicking. He's just trying to check out the situation. You alone? I have to come play, And this is one thing you'll notice about Ryan as well, is he doesn't answer a lot of questions. Okay, so they've said, are you alone? He's just held eye contact with, I believe he started here. He moved over to this woman, and now he's moved over to this woman. And... He hasn't even answered the question. And he's doing the same again here. He's holding eye contact. He's not saying anything. He's being completely unreactive. And this is a fantastic way to be aloof. It's fine. Want to buy a lady's cigarette? Now, if you were being completely aloof, you might actually allow her to keep her hand on your shoulder. But I believe, based on the plot, I've only watched Blade Runner once. But I believe that he has a digitalized girlfriend at home. And she refers to this in a minute, okay? But if you were being completely aloof, you'd pretty much let her touch you wherever you, ever she wanted. But you wouldn't react to it. Bear in mind, guys, we're probably a minute into this interaction between these three women and Ryan. He hasn't said a single word yet. Oh, you don't even smile. Didn't you hear your friends? So he says, didn't you hear your friends? Which is kind of passive aggressive to get her out of there. Don't you know what I am? Yeah. Guy eating rice. What's that? It's a tree. Oh. See the way he's very vague, okay? So when she asks, what's that? He just says, it's a tree. You know, it's, that's weird. It's almost weird. You, in modern life, we all assume that we have to describe what something is, or we have to say, it's a tree. I keep it because it's personal to me. And when I was young, there was a tree by me. And I liked it. Like, we all go into detail. What Ryan is fantastic at is just keeping things brief and mysterious. And that's why I think he's so fantastic at, at body language and being perhaps the most aloof person in Hollywood. Never seen a tree before. It's pretty. It's dead. Okay, so here, him saying it's dead which is a strange thing to say whilst holding eye contact strongly, nostrils aren't flared, eyebrows haven't lifted at all, and he's got a slight smirk here, okay? It comes out a little bit, and we can see it smirks slightly. It's a slight upwards gradient. 
Now, it's somewhat congruent because of the nature of who he is and how he's been since the start of this interaction, but you can see, based on the look on his face, the smirk and the eyes, now this is a test. Okay, he said it's dead, yet he's holding eye contact and giving the smirk to wait for her, wait for her reaction. And he's not afraid to say something like this, something quite negative or something quite strange, as in it's dead. And I think keeping that mystery again, I think is quite is quite appealing, and that's what draws people in to Ryan. And it, it's it's so aloof. Now, who keeps? Look how strong that eye contact is. He's jumping from eye to eye. We can actually see his eyes move here. Watch this which isn't necessarily a good thing to do. You should probably focus either, here we go guys, you should either focus on one eye or you should focus on this area here. That way, that's a little trick, that way you don't actually have to make eye contact, you can kind of just focus on the center of somebody's foreheads. Now if, you're, if, if your face was here and you were doing that, it might look kind of weird, but as soon as you have a little bit of distance, i.e. here and here, and you focus on this point here, it makes it a lot easier to hold eye contact for a longer amount of time and also it looks as though each eye is looking into each eye. It's a lot easier to do. But watch what Ryan does here. Who keeps a dead tree? See his eyes twitching? That's not a good idea. That's not a good way to hold eye contact, okay? They're going left to right because he's looking into each eye and it almost displays nervousness because of the quick eye movements. I would have personally held just one eye, but everything else is great. You're not going to kill me, are you? Depends. What's your model number? Why don't you look under my eye and find out? Oh. You don't like real girls. Well, I'm always here. Again, he hasn't said anything, okay? He didn't even turn properly. We can see by his shoulder position. Okay, and we can see by the way his um, face is positioned that he was actually looking kind of off this way. He was just watching her walk away, but his shoulders and body language was more turned this way. So he wasn't actually paying her full attention when she was leaving. And she said all the words on the exit. He didn't actually say anything. Now let's move into the second clip, and this is from the film Drive. And I have been exploiting him ever since. <laughs> Look, looks like we have a bigger problem than I thought. His eye contact is almost awkward. The way he walks over, holds eye contact, does a little smirk, looks somebody up and down, and then looks down himself. It kind of, it kind of goes against the sexual nature of, let's say, James Bond, Tommy Shelby, the way I've been teaching you guys. It's opposite, but it still works because he's so aloof and unreactive. Watch this. I thought we're going to have to keep the car here for a few days. So, I offered your services to take Benicio and Irene home. Would that be okay? See how long he waited to answer? Okay, so he was holding eye contact, he's thinking about things, the slight smirk, the hold of the eye contact. It's taken him like three, four seconds to answer. Yeah, sure. Yeah. And then a small response, yeah, sure. Okay, this is, the, this is the kind of dark, mysterious, aloof man that women are really drawn to. It's very, it, I, I wouldn't even say it was stoic. I would say it's actually slightly awkward. But what a lot of guys don't realize is sometimes when you're awkward with women, it's actually quite appealing. Especially when you see a guy like this who is unreactive and aloof. I don't have wheels in my car. <laughs> okay. It's one thing. It's the other thing he does really well too. I know it's a joke because obviously he's changing the wheels on the car at the moment, but he's very honest. He kind of just says what he's thinking in pretty much every film. And I think this re works really well. I think the aloofness plus the honesty, it, 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 you just kind of, you get what you see with Ryan Gosling. You don't get anything where he's beating around the bush. He's trying to be somebody he's not. He, he pretty much plays the same character in every film, but maybe he'll say more words in another film than this one or, you know, whatever. But it's pretty much the same character where he's unreactive, he's honest, there's the quick one-liners. One 
And I think that's why he's so appealing to women. Because if you look at him side on, he actually doesn't have that strong of a jawline. He's not in that great shape, you know. And a lot of women go crazy over him. But if, you know, if you said about a guy on the street, okay, he's, he's kind of skinny ripped. He has kind of a bloated jawline. You know, you wouldn't be that impressed. But for some reason, when women see him on screen, they go crazy. Thing you should know about me. We'll put the tires on. You got five minutes? Yeah. The way he's looking forward whilst driving and she's turning, looking at him, thinking, surely somebody should say something, who should start the conversation and he isn't talking. Now, I'm not saying this is for everybody, guys, this style that Ryan Gosling has. I'm not saying this is the best thing to do. There's plenty of different styles of body language and actions that you can take to be more attractive, to appear more dominant, etc. But this is just breaking down the aloofness. That's why I've started doing these types of videos so that I can bridge out a little bit more and break down different people. But the way that everybody would do this, everybody kind of tries to kill the silence. He's okay with the silence and it speaks volumes. Hey, do you want to see something? The way he only speaks when he's got something to say, I think, is a trait that we can all adopt. I think that's brilliant. You know, instead of trying to fill space, he only talks when he has an idea or he has something useful. He's the type of guy to... Here's a tip as well, guys, okay? You get a woman's number and then you might message her and be like, hey, do you want to meet up? She's like, yeah, sure. And then you go, great, where do you want to go? Like, that's not what they want to hear. What they want to hear isn't even, oh, I want to take you for dinner at this place. Like, it's just so normal. Like, that happens all the time. I personally think if you have a woman's number... You can just set it on ice for like, and people say, oh yeah, but then you go in the friend zone and whatever. Not if you're a high value man. They'll, they'll always re respond to you if you're a high value man. They'll be waiting for you. They might message you first, who knows. But I always think don't invite women to go anywhere unless you actually got something to do. So if I'm going somewhere for the day and I think, hey, I want to take somebody with me, then I'll ask. I'll say, I'm doing this anyway. Do you want to come? Do you want to come with? And then I think it shows that you're independent, you've got things going on. And that's what Ryan is very good at with his aloofness, is he's not afraid to do what he wants to do and let others be the passenger. I know they're in a car, but even if he was on feet, whatever, on foot, he would be doing the same thing. He would be saying, I want to do this. Do you want to come with me? If they didn't, he's going to do it anyway. And that quality is very appealing. An another late response, a little smirk, and maybe three seconds later, he says, okay. Doesn't question it, doesn't say anything different, just continues with what he's doing. The reason I let that play for so long there, guys, is I just wanted to show you, yeah, he's smiling and joining in, but he doesn't say a word, okay? He just gets on with things, he just does whatever he wants to do, but he, it's really awkward to analyze and break down. That's why I've, I've done a drive an analysis before, and I think he says something like 250, 300 words in this entire film. There's way more awkward scenes than this, but... It's, it's very awkward for me to even break down because there's little to talk about, but just watching it speaks more volumes than I think I can do justice. So let's move on to the next clip. Now, here's the next clip. If you haven't seen this one, this is from a, a film called The Place Beyond the Pines. A unbelievable film. I recommend everybody should watch it. Very, very good. <laughs> Is 
just take a left out here. Do you know what I find interesting about Ryan Gosling and men like this is that they're so aloof, it's almost like they're living in a different world. When people are talking to them, they're still doing their own thing and you kinda get that you kinda get that moment where somebody, maybe let's say your name's Mike, they're like, Come over here, Mike. Mike? Mike, over here. You know, you kinda get those moments where somebody's like, God, is he even there? It's like talking to a brick wall. And although that might sound negative and, you know, somewhere like the workplace, it probably would be or a business sense, it would be when somebody's just getting on with their own life. It just seems so appealing. I think we're all getting rushed around in the modern world. We're panicking. We we want to be seen as fitting in. And I think these people that just seem as though they're in a different world are just people are drawn to them. Fall first, I want you to put it on top of your head. Do you understand me? Yeah. Don't tense up. See how I, I know he's in a police, you know, police station. They're telling him what to do, but everything is a slow, deliberate movement. Everything is very calm. This officer's got some questions for you. Over here, man. Even that head turn, look how slow that was. It was almost menacing, it, like something you'd probably see in a horror movie. If they changed the music, it would probably be quite scary. But see what I mean here, guys, look. I don't actually think he's particularly a great looking guy. There's the jawline, look. And you've got this whole, let me get rid of this so you can see it properly. You've got this whole thing going on under here in the submental zone that I spoke to you guys about before. And then the actual neck, it just, like, there's a massive layer of, not necessarily fat, but there's a lack of tone under here, okay? And if this was a guy in real life, women wouldn't really find this attractive. And when people say Ryan Gosling's such a good looking guy, he's just kind of just skinny ripped, skinny ripped, not great jawline, but women always say, oh, Ryan Gosling's jaw, his body. I, I just think it comes from his aloof nature. I think people are so drawn in that they just put him up on a pedestal. What's your last name? Glanton. Glanton, can you spell it? G-L-A-N-T-O-N. What's your date of birth? See the way that the guy who talk, who's talking to him is being quite fierce. He's raising his voice. He's being a little bit quicker than Ryan where he's saying, what's your date of birth? Like trying to fire in and be, you know, it's police versus criminal. They're always going to treat you like shit. And Ryan is unfazed. He's had the same tonality. He's not speeding up or panicking or going, um, uh, 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 like a lot of people would. Just watch this again. Glanton, can you spell it? G-L-A-N-T-O-N. What's your date of birth? 103166. You got any nicknames, street names, or anything like that? Handsome. Handsome? Again, that's a quick little witted line to diffuse the situation. I think that's quite clever. And the way he's kept that same tonality, he's kind of toying with the police officer. That's the aloof nature. You know, you're in a police cell, you're in a, a dangerous situation, but you're just still being very aloof. Like, th there's no awareness of danger. It's like that film, I think, Lucky Number Selvin, where the guy doesn't actually... He has a condition where your immune to kind of danger, like you don't really register it in your brain. And it just seems as though Ryan Gosling has that in every single film. It's so appealing. But again, look, you can see here, guys, that's not, that's not an attractive feature, but women are so drawn in. His cheekbones are low, he has the blue eyes, but it's definitely his aura, I'm telling you. You working? No. Unemployed? Yeah. One word answers again, it's very aloof. Where were you born? Whilst holding eye contact. Vegas. Yet. Another one word answer. Take off your belt. We're gonna need your shoelaces. But I'm gonna need that I'm gonna need the clothing. It looks like there's blood on it. You want me to shoot down for you? Well, no, it's just strip down for me, but I gotta take your clothing. Saying what you're thinking, okay? That's what I said to you guys earlier. It's one great way to be aloof is to say what's going through your head. A lot of people will be afraid to do that and they just take their clothes off. Going through his head is this is a little bit much, so he's gonna he's gonna ask, okay. Like, you want me to take my clothes off? You want me to strip down for you? Like, he's he's not afraid to put those questions out there. And that's a trait that's associated with James Dean. A lot of people said that there was a woman once who I think she had, I think she had a deformity in both of her legs. She couldn't walk. 
and everybody was kind of looking the other way and ignoring her and when she came and sat by him he turned and said what's what's wrong with your legs and all of us would agree that's probably pretty rude you know because we've been brought up in modern society but she turned immediately and was like thank you for asking and just had a chat with him and it was just so normal and then everybody you know kind of joined in and she was part of the group and I think sometimes just being that honest in that kind of monotone and being aloof about things and just asking the questions that are on your minds without being rude, I think is a fantastic trait. And you got blood on it. We're too much in the back. I'll, talk well, I'll give you clothes. I'll do that. I got some clothes. Just us here. This is, this is the process. Nothing I can do about it. You got to stay with us right now, all right? I'm not trying to give you a hard time. I'm just explaining the way it's going to go. I'll, I'll replace your clothing when you turn in your clothing. See the difference? See how this guy's explaining himself? And I know it's his job role, so he kind of has to. But the difference between the two characters, okay? One is completely explaining themselves. You have to do this because, and then breaking it down, and stopping, and um, because, you know, and stopping, and umming, and ahhing, and that sort of thing. And it's just very disjointed. Whereas when Ryan speaks, it's very fluent, it's one word answers, it's precise, it's strong. He just says what he thinks and it's very to the point. I think that's why so many people are drawn in by him. So what do you want me to do? Again, there, putting the question to somebody. So what do you want me to do? Because basically, he, he's not wrong here, Ryan. The guy was talking bollocks. He was just waffling, to be honest. And then Ryan just looks at him with strong eye contact and says, so what do you want me to do? You know, he's a very practical individual in every film, and that comes across here. I have to have you take your shirt off. <laughs> Another little smirk, okay. There's so many dominant men do smirks, not laughs. Set her up in the counter for me, please. To be fair, he looks a little bit bigger in this film, but in past films where women have gone crazy, he is kind of skinny ripped, but he looks pretty good here. Hey, don't start throwing your shit at me. So even when the guy says there, hey, don't start throwing shit at me, etc. The way he just doesn't really change, just kind of look to the side. It would have been better, I think, if he had held eye contact, but the way it's just the aloofness. Dressed. And the way he reached for those clothes slowly as well. Okay, so what I want to show you guys now is the exact same thing, being slightly aloof, apart from one scene with a B, which you'll see, but being more aloof, but saying more, okay? So this is probably more congruent with modern life and society, perhaps being in the workplace, being able to actually talk a little bit more than saying three lines every hour. So this is how you use it in an alternative sense. Scotch. Again, just using one word. TV. Yeah, so. Yeah, so. Just very relaxed, aloof again. Like, the, the language is very congruent with the way he moves. And this woman's clearly interested. I'm gonna let them off, the car company, scot-free. Not enough evidence of collusion. I heard. See. They're just interrupting the sentence at the end. I heard. Just again, just a couple of words. And it's it's the words that he's using are very aloof. Yeah, so yeah, I heard. You know, just blowing things away. Some went up, some went down. Nothing changes. Just like you said. Look. They got away with it. Big surprise. You know? Again, the congruent language again, big surprise, without sounding surprised. That's another carefree, aloof kind of way of saying that. People are stupid. And then drawing an illogical conclusion, people are stupid. Just like not thinking about things too much. They're not that stupid. The point is, oh. five years tops, we're all driving electric cars from Japan anyway. Mark my words. Look at this. You ever see the bad breath tie? <sighs> Breathe on it. <sighs> it works every time. The way there that you've got Russell Crowe in complete hysterics and watch how relaxed Ryan is here. Watch this. 
It's just a little smirk and move on like it was nothing. It's very aloof. <sighs> Breathe on it. <sighs> so th this is the extent to which we get. We get slight smirk going out each way. The eyebrows haven't lifted. The face hasn't moved. The eyes have slightly squinted because obviously he's doing a, a slight smirk. The nostrils, maybe they've slightly flared where he's laughing and there's, there's air coming out of here. But that's it. There's nothing. Whereas look at the difference here. Open mouth. I know this might be the first time he's seeing it. And this film is, to be fair, hilarious. But it's this reaction all the time that makes him so aloof. It works every time. Kills Holly. At least you're drinking again. Yeah. You know, his little lines like that. At least you're drinking again. A lot of people would be like, you need to stop drinking. You need to stop doing this. Worrying about everything. But being a aloof individual and making it congruent with your body language... At least you're drinking again. You know, making a joke of a dire scenario. That's something that I think adds wit to Ryan Gosling's persona. I feel great. You know, nobody got hurt. People got hurt. I'm saying I think they died quickly, though, so I don't think that they got hurt. Look at this. I'm sorry you look Filipino. I do. Oh, look. See that pause there, guys? While he's holding eye contact after this, watch. I do. There, look. A small head nod, holding eye contact, not moving. Oh, look. And he let Russell look away first. That's very, very good. Mexican. And we already got our first case. Old lady in Glendale. Mm. Thinks her husband's sleeping with Linda Carter. Wonderful. Or Linda Carter. And those small little head, head leans and head turns, they're very useful. You know, they're very carefree. It's like you almost don't have to answer the question or say any words. You just turn your heads. You just kind of drop it to the side. It's little head nods. They, they work better than words sometimes. It's, it, Ryan Gosling is a master at using these. That's what we have to figure out. Right. But he's 82, so it's time sensitive. Yeah. What do you say? And he swats away a bee here, okay? We should watch it for comedic purposes. To the birds. Hallelujah. Okay, I couldn't get rid of the subtitles on this one, guys, but this is the final clip. Probably my favorite clip in this film, Nice Guys. If you haven't seen it, please go and watch it. One of the funniest films ever, just based on the the script writing, to be honest. I just think the, the words that they're saying to each other, the quick one-liners, the sarcasm, the the lack of like l people laughing after saying something really funny. I, I love that sort of thing. It's a great film. And this is probably the funniest scene. But you can see here, it's it's very similar to the last clip. It's aloof. It's carefree. While saying a little bit more. Kid. Uh, what? You know the guy who lived here? You know, it's just kids. You know the guy who who lived here. He's getting straight to the point, like we said earlier. He's just diving straight in with it. And the body language here, like, it's not that impressive, okay? You know, everything's in, in decent working order, but if we looked at his... you definitely say that Russell's body language is get, is better, okay? If you look at Ryan Gosling, he's kind of got sloping, he's got sloping shoulders. He's not exactly got the most muscular frame. The arms by the side, which is the, probably the best place to have them. Maybe I'd probably have them a little bit wider if I was trying to be Dwayne Johnson in Baywatch kind of vibes. He's got his legs slightly apart, okay, they're planted on the floor. It's, it's not bad, it's not unbelievable, he's holding strong eye contact. You know, he's not worried about standing in an awkward fashion, and that's what makes his body language good, is he, he barely flinches, he just kind of does less. And sometimes the less you do, the more volume it speaks, the more effective it can be. Maybe. What's it to you? Hey, he'll give you $20 if you answer. I didn't say that. The way here, okay, watch his reaction afterwards. So he says, he'll give you $20, okay? And he's like, he turns around, he's like, I didn't say that. It's just another, look, four, four words, okay? I didn't say that. But instead of then arguing the point, and instead of making a case or explaining what he did actually say, you know, like a lot of people do, he just turns around, accepts it, and that's what's so important about Ryan's body language. And the congruency of his words and his actions is that he'll just get on with things. He'll accept them. He'll say, okay, and just move on without actually saying that. 20 bucks, man, or you can blow. Wow. 
you know, again, he's doing the same thing, okay? Holding strong eye contact, body isn't moving, it's not like he's shuffling his feet around down here, arms aren't really moving, and all he says is wow, which is obviously one word, if it's even considered a word in the dictionary, I don't know, and he just moves on, he accepts it. Hey. And another one of those little head movements, we saw that again there, guys, watch this at the end here. Thank you. Okay, so his head movements sometimes speak for him, and I think that's very aloof. Yeah. I knew the dude. Filmmaker dude. Saw him making a film last month. Experimental films, right? I guess. More like a nudie film. Do you see a girl about 5'8", dark hair, named Amelia? Again, he's getting straight to the point. He's firing in with his question, what he wants to know, what he wants to figure out. He doesn't like wasting time. Nope. Saw that famous chick. What famous chick? Dead one, porn star, Misty something. You saw Misty Mountains here? Yeah. Talked to the producer. I... No, his name was Sid... Sid Hatrack. Yeah. Nobody's name is Hatrack. That's what I mean again, guys, about saying what's on your mind. Nobody's name is Hatrack. Rather than asking any more, qu any more questions about it, just coming out with your own conclusion. Nobody's name is Hatrack. And just holding eye contact and then, but accepting what he said, he's not arguing the point. Whatever. Tried to get a job. I offered to show my dick because I got a big dick. All right. Yeah. Again, the one word answer. Both of them here is fantastic. Both Russell and Ryan. They're, they're both unreactive. I know he's turned, okay? He's turned in disgust. I think that's for comedic purposes. But the way he's just said, all right. And then again, accepted it. That's very aloof. And then moved on. <laughs> oh, that's very nice. And he did have a foot shuffle. I think he shouldn't have done that. But I think, again, he's just doing things for comedic purposes. Yeah. You sure you didn't see another girl? Nope. You guys want to see my dick? Nobody <laughs> wants to see your dick, dude. 20 bucks? We already paid you 20. What am I saying? Oh. Again, that we've already paid you 20, but wait, what am I saying? You know, that's an aloof nature with more chat. That's with more talk, okay? Saying something and then being like, oh, it doesn't matter. And just moving on from it. That's what Ryan is very, very good at. And it, it makes him funny. And I think there's definitely a place for this in modern life. But I hope you guys appreciate this video. It's something different, impossibly hard to break down because obviously he does basically nothing. But I hope you appreciate the video as always guys and I'll speak to you all soon. If you want to grab our men's lifestyle supplement and male advantage ebook, all links are in the bio.